All right, okay. So what I thought we could do today is make a release of, of Verde. Uh, we've been kind of putting off making a release uh, for a little while now, uh, just because we've never really found the time to to sit down and do it. And we kept meaning to add new things and, and it, it just ended up not happening. Um, but we figured it might as we might as well make a release now because there are some fixes that we kind of want to get out there. Uh, one is a compatibility warning that that was kind of annoying with the the latest version of Scikit-Learn that Santiago fixed a little while ago. Uh, so we, yeah, we figured it would be nice to show the process and kind of walk people through um, how we make a release um, and maybe get some feedback on on ways that we could improve or or you know see if we can. Um, yeah, maybe like yeah, spot areas where where things get a little bit messy. Um, and this uh, we've currently just been able to merge a compatibility with Python three point ten, uh, so it's a good time to get a release out so that this can be rolled uh, and pushed forward to Harmonica and other packages. Uh, all right, so the way we we would go about making a release um, it would be first I'm going to go into issues um, and then you can make a new issue and we have here uh, a template for issues called um, a release checklist All right so if I if I start one of these then it pre-populates this with um, a, a title so I can just replace XYZ with the release number uh, and it collects some information here as well. So um, the number of the release, when we uh, intend to make the release, the DOI that's been reserved from Zenodo. Uh, and there are a, a bunch of items here that we can follow uh, just so we can uh, remember to do everything that we need to do when we make a release. All right. so uh, for this one, I actually already had one created for 1.7. All right, so uh, I made this, um, well, uh, quite a while ago, as you can see. So December uh, last year was when we intended to get this out, but it just ended up not happening. Um, so let's see if we can finish this now. All right, so let's follow here. So first step would be to go to Zenodo uh, and then start a new release. All right, so I'm going to navigate here to zenodo.org. And this is the part that's kind of hard to scale because Zenodo doesn't really allow um, uh, multiple people to edit the same, um, the same publication. So whoever created the publication in the first place is the one who's going to have to, um, who's going to have to, to uh, make the new entry on Zenodo. But everything else, basically anyone with, uh, with admin rights can do. Uh, in the in the the repository, and uh, if anyone is interested in taking this up, let, let us know. Uh, right, so I'm gonna go here into upload, and we have a bunch of previous uploads here. There's a lot of the Fatiando data stuff, um, and I can find the one for Verde. So the last one we had was 1.6.1. So if I click there, this is the latest Zenodo entry for, for Verde. Uh, and what we can do is create a new version. All right, so this should have basically all the metadata all pre-filled, right? Uh, so I'm gonna, right, so I went there, I created a new version. Uh, next is delete all existing files. So we had here a zip archive for for version 1.6.1 1. so i'm going to delete that um right then copy the reserve doi to this issue so let's get the zenodo reserves a doi for the new release which i can copy and i can edit this here all right so i can replace that doi here because that makes it easier for us to copy this elsewhere uh, for the release date here, let's say, let's put today's date. So, uh, yeah, March 25. Okay. 
So update. All right, so now I've got the DOI. Then we can update the release date on Zenodo. So it's uh, 2022, March 25th. And update the version number. So let's go to the version number here and update it to 1.7.0. Um, so just double checking here, we did we don't put a lot of information here on purpose uh, because it's fairly annoying to have to keep editing this over and over again. Uh, so we try to put a bare minimum here and kind of just point people towards uh, towards the websites where where they can find out more. Um, and actually, we should make this a uh, a link. These are not links for some reason. Right, so 1.7, so updated that. So add as authors any new contributors who added themselves to authors.md. So I'm going to come here to our authors file. Right, and so far we've only got um, five people here on Verde, and those are the same five people we have here. So we got nothing to change here. All right, so no new authors since last time. So I can take this. Uh, review author order. So nothing really changed there. And save the release draft. Okay, so let's uh, let's save the release draft. Okay, so now we're gonna step out of Zenodo a bit, and now we're gonna have to make the, the part that's actually a bit more labor intensive, which is creating the, the change log for this. Um, so with the change log, we're trying to summarize what changed between the previous release and this one and kind of try to make any, um, any hi well, highlight any important changes or things that are uh, breaking compatibility or that maybe will be removed in, in a future version. Um, so those we kind of want to try to highlight. Uh, so this is a little bit more involved than, than the other bits. All right. So to do this, we also have a bunch of like handy little commands that you can copy and paste. And really, like we should probably try to write something that automates a lot of this. But we don't do this often enough that we that we really need to. So we've been kind of avoiding doing that. Um, so first, we can generate a list of all commits between the, the last release and now. I'm going to copy and paste this command into my terminal. So I'm going to go here in my source.verde uh, folder. All right. So I'm in, uh, I'm in Verde, and let's just make sure that I'm in the main branch. And let me make sure that my... Um, that my clone is up to date. All right. So now that it's up to date, I can do git log from six one point six point one, which is the latest, the the last release, and I'm going to put that in changes.rst. Right. So now I have changes.rst, and let's go into that. So I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna use Vim here, and I'm opening up the changes.rst file. So this has all of the commit messages between um, between the previous release and the current one. Okay, so generated. Um, then the next thing is remove any trivial changes. So when we do things like, well, sometimes we used to have a bot that would update some documents sometimes, or uh, if we're updating our continuous integration scripts. So some things like that are kind of irrelevant and people don't really care. Well, I mean, there's no reason why uh, users or uh, developers who rely on Verde would care about that. So we tend to remove those to uh, keep things a little bit shorter. Uh, so let's um, try to edit things here. So what I'm going to do is remove all of these um commit author so all of these headers i'm going to remove and i'm going to keep only the the main um 
the main title of each commit that has the link to the respective pull request. So, uh, so here, I'm actually going to go ahead and keep the explanation sentence, which is better than this one. Right, then let's remove this. So we modernize the front page of the docs. Uh, then modernize the install page. Move the sources. Actually, let me let me keep the descriptions because I'm going to forget what these mean. Uh, so I'm just going to remove the commits here. The commit and author, commit and author. Uh, an author, commit an author. This one. All right, so as, um, as you see, this bit is kind of manual. And yeah, we do need a, a better process for this. Uh, which uh, feels like it could be done with a Python script, but we maybe don't want to do that. Uh, so now we can start kind of um, editing the list down and make it a little bit more user friendly. Uh, so, for example, update files from contributing. So this is a bot commit. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, right. So add support for Python 3.9. I'm going to move this up, right? And uh, let's merge these two into one, right? So for Python 3.9 and 3.10, right? So we got only one message for both of these because otherwise it's a bit redundant. Um, so use keywords for Default arguments. Okay, so uh, so explicitly pass default arguments, the corresponding keywords on tests and examples. Uh, so let's uh, make this a bit more explicit, and let's remove the description. Um, so updated. Bims, an example of make X array grid. So I'm adding restructured text uh, syntax here. Uh, so the double backticks make this a code block, right? So recent versions of X array changed. Uh, right, so we don't need that. So add option to pass coordinates to the grid method. Uh, instead of just region and and spacing. Right, so this is another change that we've been wanting for a little while. Uh, so remove normalize argument when creating uh, scikit learn solvers. So this is the bit that was deprecated and well, was removed in scikit-learn and was causing uh, a warning to show up all the time. All right, so we rename the main branch from master to main. All right, so we got that one. So, um, yeah, so GitHub Actions configuration, this bit doesn't really matter. Uh, and this bit also uh, doesn't really matter uh, because, you know, this is just uh, us fixing the continuous integration scripts, which is kind of a never ending battle. Uh, so we, yeah, we, we kind of don't need to be listing those all the time. All right, so we place uh, replace PyLint with more Flake 8 plugins. So this one we, we can keep. Uh, 
link guides back to the Fatih on the white pages, All right? So link uh, COC, COC authorship and maintainers. So the COC, the authorship and maintainers guide are linking back to the Fatih on the white pages. So instead of duplicating the wording everywhere, uh, we keep it that is as is. So we switch the docs, uh, switch the docs theme to Sphinx book theme, uh, which looks a lot nicer. Uh, update the contact link in the docs move configuration from setup.py.setup.cfg, uh, deprecate the datasets module, in which will be replaced by Insayo in the future. And in here, we can make this a link. And of course, I don't know the URLs. So let's go to uh, the GitHub URL. So copy that and paste. All right. So uh, warn that the default score uh, will change from, from R squared to MSE or to, to negative, negative RMSE in version 2.0, right? Because this is because we were using the R square metric uh, to score the estimator but for regression problems like uh, for for the grading problems actually what like the mean square error is a little bit more more informative because it has data units uh so it's one thing talking about an error of i don't know 10 meters or something like that uh as opposed to the dimensionless r square so that's why we kind of wanted to um uh wanted to change that but we can't just change it because otherwise it might break everyone's code who is relying on it being R squared. All right, so we're also removing the verity.test function. Uh, function, which will be removed in 2.0. Um, so there's no reason to have that function in there. It's just another thing for us to keep and test. Um, it's much easier to just run PyTest on the command line instead of running, um, instead of importing Python and running verde.test. Right, so we're we're replacing that. Uh, the checkerboard move the checkerboard class to verde.synthetic. Right, but it's you can still import it from data sets, but when you do, it will um, issue a warning that, that it's been moved. Um, so move the uh, all right, so this was just moving the sources, so that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, modernize the install page. The installing page actually and modernize the front page of the docs uh, replace google analytics update to the new black syntax also it doesn't really matter too much all right so now that we've um all right so now the change log has been kind of um cleaned up and simplified so um the thing that i need to do still is so one, let's let's remove all of these. And then we can uh, we can add um, 
make these like a bullet list and now we can separate them into categories right so we can say deprecation uh, and so we can say um so that one dating the verity.test function the data sets modules um Uh, what was the other one? Set up the pi to set up dot CS. Yeah, this one, right? So warning that the metric is changing. Okay. Uh, so we can also put these as like, you know, some, some highlights or uh, yeah, no. All right, so let's say new features. And we're going to also have uh, maintenance. Main. Uh, oh, my God, I can't, I can't type. Okay, some maintenance tasks, uh, documentation tasks. Um, and yeah, so for our maintenance tasks, let's uh, that. So support for uh, 3.9 and 3.10, replacing Google Analytics. Uh, these are documentation tasks. Uh, Moving the configuration is maintenance, contact link in the docs, switching docs themes, uh, the Fatiando wide pages, PyLint here, rename the main branch, move normalize. So a lot of maintenance and not a whole lot of, of new features, but that's okay. Well, actually, Let's say that this is uh, documentation and documentation, right? So now we've got things kind of sorted. And so that's basically it for the, for the change log. Uh, so it is a bit of work, but you know, it's not, it's not taking hours of, of our time to do this. So that's why we haven't really invested in trying to automate a lot of this. So I did edit the list to remove any trivial changes, organized into categories. Uh, uh, so now I need to add a list of people who contributed. So I'm going to copy and paste the, the git command there. And, And that's something I can run here and change the version number to 1.6.1. Uh, so for this, it was basically just me and Santi. So I'm gonna copy that. Um, so actually, let me split my screen and open up the doc changes.rst file. So this is the change, the sources of the change log in the documentation. Um, and I never remember, so I'm just going to copy it from here. All right. So release contains contributions from Santiago and me, and let's also copy this bit here. Um, and to be honest, I don't really like the badges very well. Um, it seems a little bit difficult, so I can just say. DOI is this. All right, so this was released on 2203, oh, almost a year to the date, uh, 25. All right, so it's been a while since we have made a release. Okay, so I've added a list of people. Uh, Right, so now I need to replace the PR numbers with links to GitHub. So there's a little handy set command here. 
Um, so for those of you who, who haven't seen this before, SAD is a command line program that does um, search and replace. So you can give it like a little pattern. So we're saying here, replace uh, a hashtag followed by, um, followed by one or more uh, numbers uh, with the hashtag and whatever the numbers were uh, as a link. Uh, sorry, the so we're replacing it with uh, a restructured text link with the hashtag and whatever was the number, uh, and then github.com, fatiando, verde, poll, and then the number again. So this replaces the number with a link to the pull request by that number in the uh, on GitHub. All right, so I'm gonna come here on the command line and I'm gonna copy this but I'm just gonna change project here with Verde. All right, so when I run this, my changes.rst file here, notice that the PR numbers got changed with a, a link to the, the pull request, right? So that's, that's quite nice. So, okay, so we did that. And now copy the changes to doc changes.rst. So I'm gonna mark this as done as well. I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to paste that here and I'm going to say version 1.7.0. All right, and it should have all the information here. So I can save. Um, all right, so before I do anything else, I want to build the documentation so that I ensure that I haven't broken the, the page somehow. Uh, so since I'm already in my, my Verde development environment, uh, which, is, uh, which is in the environment.yaml file, so it's defined here with all of the things that you would need uh, to develop. Um, except for make, it, it should have make as well. But we'll, we'll do that in a separate pull request, I guess. Uh, Right, so if I want to build the docs, I can say make minus C since I'm uh, I'm in the root of the uh, of the 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 repository. I can say make minus C docs, and it'll build the documentation with Sphinx. So the minus C argument in in make tells it to look for a make file in a different folder. Right, so here it's going to run and try to build the, the HTML. So this can take a little while because it, it downloads a bunch of like um, cross-referencing from other packages so that we can link to their documentations. Um, so like if you see a, a NumPy function in our docs, you can often click it and go to the NumPy documentation. And that's gotten from this uh, InterSphinx uh, and we're, uh, okay, so we started getting a bunch of deprecation warnings from Cartopy, apparently. Um, yeah, so something involving Shapely. So, yeah. Okay. So now it's finishing building the HTML. All right. Okay, so now it's done. So I can do, uh, well, let's do Firefox uh, and I'm going to open doc build HTML index. All right, so this is the page I just built. Uh, so it has our new, our new front page, the new theme. So the, the Sphinx, uh, Sphinx book theme, uh, which is quite nice. And what we want to check is the change log. All right, so this is the change log that we just added. So here's the Zenodo DOI link, which shouldn't work right now because we haven't published the release yet. Uh, all right, so we've got the, the change log updated. This DOI doesn't work and it shouldn't. And these links now all should take to GitHub. 
All right, so they take to the respective pull requests that, that were merged um, doing these uh, different things. Okay, so now that we have our change log, let's go back here. Uh, so now what we need to do is make a markdown, make a markdown copy of the change log, and we can use this tool called Pandoc to do that. Uh, and again, this is another thing we need to um, maybe kind of try to streamline a bit because we we make this change because we like putting the change log on the GitHub release page. Uh, but Sphinx wants things in restructured text, but GitHub uses Markdown. Uh, so we need to have this, um, this conversion step. Uh, one thing that I would like to implement is having Sphinx use uh, Markdown, at least for the change log part. Uh, and we can do that with the Sphinx book theme and, and uh, um, a plugin called Mist. But, you know, it's another thing to implement there. And if we can do that, then we can generate the entire change log in Markdown and we don't have to worry about the conversion step. But for now, uh, we'll, we'll do this. All right. Okay, so let's do, let's run that. So now I should have changes.md, which I can open here. Changes.md. So we got our markdown file uh, that's been created by Pandoc. And for some reason, I don't know why it puts these. So let's delete that. Okay, so we have our, our markdown changes. And now we need to add a link to the new release. Uh, so before we had it in the readme, one thing we've been trying to transition to is uh, listing that in a, a, a separate page in the docs. So this hasn't been updated in the, the release checklist yet because not all projects have moved to this, but it's something we, we have to do as well. Uh, so for now, I need to add a link here to 1.7 to this page. All right, so this page is in versions.rst. So let's open that. So doc versions.rst. And then I can copy here and I can change 1.6.1. Uh, And uh, I need to escape these. And I'll change that to 1.7.0. Right. And let's change both of them. All right. So now I've got the, the link to the new version here so that um, in the future, if people want to go between two different versions of the docs, there's a link to all of them there. And let's once again make minus C. Make minus C doc to rebuild the docs. Okay, so uh, so now this version should have a new link, and so we're good with that. All right, so that version is done. So build and serve the docs locally, which I've already done. Uh, and now I need to open a PR to update the change log. All right, and then I can merge the PR. So let me get status. So I'm going to commit my changes to doc. I'm going to check out a new branch and I'm going to call it change log. Then I can make a commit. I'm going to call it uh, ch add change log entry for. 1.7.0 uh, so um, this is a minor version that introduces some deprecations and a couple of new features okay so now I can push minus u change log and then I can click here to make a pull request. All right, and it's already pre-populated. 
So I'm just going to copy this into the description and I can say C release 1.7 to link it to the issue. And so now I've got a new, uh, a new pull request adding that and it's going to start running um, all of our um, GitHub Actions tests. Uh, now for the for the sake of time, uh, well, what I would kind of have to do is just wait for all of these to run. Uh, so yeah, so these can take a little while, but let's get started with the rest while we wait for this. All right, so I open the PR. So the the next step is making um, making a release on GitHub. So for this, I'm gonna go to. Let me open up the base of the repository. So when you're making a release, there's this releases tab here. So I can click on that, right? And I can click on draft a new release. Right, so the GitHub release, uh, it, it has like its own entry thing, like an issue or something, but it also tags, uh, puts a tag in a particular commit in the repository. Uh, so I'm going to put the tag name as v1.7.0, and that's the format we've been using for since forever. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create new tag. And the release title, I'm just going to say v1.7.0, because um, I don't want to, like, we, we don't really have the practice of, of giving names to the releases or anything like that. All right, and so here for the, the release notes, that's where I would I would copy changes.md. So I'm going to copy the text of changes.md. And I can paste that here. So since this is the markdown version, so now I get the full change log on the GitHub system as well. All right, so here I can save this as a draft release. And if we had compiled packages or things like that, we can add that to, to this bit here. Uh, so let's mark. So draft a new release, uh, tag the version, fill the release description, and I'm just going to wait to publish the release once, um, once the continuous integration here all passes. right? And that, that might take a little while, but um, yeah, better safe than sorry. Um, all right, so it's saved. Uh, for for Zenodo, the the thing that I'm gonna upload here is the zip file that that I get from the release. All right, so if I look at a previous release, uh, GitHub creates a source code archive. So this is a snapshot of the repository at the time of the release, and this is what I end up downloading and then uploading it to to Zenodo. So that, uh, where is Zenodo? So that's what gets archived in Zenodo every time we make a release. So we don't archive the full history of the repository all the time. Uh, we just archive the snapshots between different versions, uh, which, yeah, it's more than enough uh, for, for this case. Uh, so once once we have that, we upload it here. And then we just click publish, and then we have uh, a new version on Zenodo with the archive of the source code and the uh, the the brand new DOI. Um, oh no! So we got failing changes here. Uh, oh no! So it's just code cov. Okay. Uh, yeah. So code cov will tend to say that it failed because. Um, it has to wait for all of the tests to finish so that it gets the full test coverage. So while it doesn't that, it'll just say failed, but as soon as they all finish, then this is gonna change into a pass because we, we really didn't touch the code. So there should be no reason for this to fail. Um, but mostly like, don't I shouldn't really have to wait for this too much because uh, the tests are running continuously. So chances of them failing now are very minimal, uh, but it's good to wait because just in case between the last time we did any development or now, sometimes you know a package updates and then something gets broken. Uh, so you don't want to find that out when we're trying to 
push the release to PyPI and then suddenly all, everything's broken because of that. Um, so in general, we try to wait as much as we can and just let things run because um, it's just it's just uh, waiting a few minutes. Right. So most of them are pretty much uh, pretty much done. So all of the Ubuntu tests passed on Python 3.6 all the way to 3.10. Um, and we're testing these with the latest version of all the dependencies and also with uh, the smallest possible version of the dependencies and with all of the optional dependencies that we have. Right? So we, we test all combinations of all of those. So the Mac tests are going to finish soon and the Windows tests are usually the last ones because they, they take the longest to run. Um, and I don't know if that's just a side effect of the Windows VMs being a bit slow. Uh, all right, so as soon as this is done, then we can we can merge and then um, and then publish the release. All right, so when uh, all right, so when when we uh, publish the release, we have a bunch of GitHub Actions scripts. Uh, let me see if I can find them. So we have some GitHub action scripts, which are all located here in the workflows folder. So .github workflows. Uh, so one of them is this pypi.yml. And this is a, a um, GitHub actions script that basically builds uh, a source and a wheel distribution of, of our package and uploads it to pypi. All right, so when, uh, all right, so basically every time um, a pull request is opened, a push is made to the main branch, or we publish a release, uh, it's going to uh, set up a Python environment. It's going to um, uh, build source and wheel distributions, right? Then it's going to check them, and if the the event is not a pull request then it'll store the 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 built packages and then if we um where is it uh if we uh, are on a, on the main branch we push the the built packages to the test pypi service uh, and if it's an actual release then we publish it to the actual pypi so all of this is kind of automated the the PyPI passwords are are stored um, on GitHub as as secrets, so these don't get revealed. Uh, so it's um, yeah, it's th th this part at least is um, is very well automated. The only bit that's not automated is the um, is the generation of the change log, basically. Uh, so these, let me check on them a bit. So I'm going to go into actions. And the only thing that needs to finish passing is the test workflow, All right? And these should be almost done. So if I click on one of them, uh, then I know that it's already, uh, so it's been running the test for about a minute. Uh, the Windows builds all passed already, uh, except for the 3.6 ones, but they should all be running the tests, All right? So once they're running the tests, it's relatively quick. Uh, what sometimes takes the longest is just installing everything um, and getting all the right versions of packages installed. So that sometimes takes a little while. All right, so this one has passed. And they should all be, uh, they should all be finishing up. Um, right, so it's saving some, uh, so why is it taking so long there? And okay, so this one is done. The Mac OS build is done and the two Windows builds are uh, pretty much done as well. Well, this one is stuck here for some reason, um, but you know, the, te the test has already, have already passed. Um, and okay, so it's finishing up now. Uh, so one thing we do have is it tries to save the conda packages that it downloaded to avoid downloading them over and over again. Uh, but yeah, so this one is pretty much done. 
so at least I find it really satisfying for <laughs> for the the builds here to finish running and then get a a, a nice little check there. Okay, so all the builds have passed. So our change log pull request passes. We're confident that you know if we release this, it's something that actually works with uh, current versions of Python and all of that. So let's squash and merge. And uh, no need to update that. So I'm merging this. Okay, so now that I've merged the change log, what I can do is tick here that yes, I have merged the change log and now I can publish the release, right? Cause that's all that I had left to do on my release. So release uh, V1.6, which is this one. Uh, yeah, so before that, let me just check. Uh, when was the last time that we yeah, we did this not long ago. Okay. All right. So if I'm happy here, oh, sorry, this is not the, the release I wanted. All right. So I got my draft 1.7 release. So when I, when I'm happy with this, I can, uh, I can say publish the release. So I'm going to do that now. All right, and now the commit uh, 01B blah, 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 has been tagged with version 1.7.0. The release has been made, which then triggers uh, GitHub Actions to run some stuff. Uh, so while, while it does that, I'm going to download here the source code zip. So let me open up that folder. All right, so I got here verde 1.7.zip. Uh, and this is an archive of the repository at this time, All right? So let me go into Zenodo and I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to drag this here, All right? And then I can say, start upload. All right. So I'm going to save. And I'll just do one more double check. So the release date is uh, March 25, 2022. Uh, version number here should be 1.7.0. Uh, authors hadn't changed. Uh, these are links. Version 1.7 is here as well. And the rest is kind of all just standard. Right, so this is pretty good. So we can probably go ahead and publish this. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to come here to GitHub Actions and I'm going to check on, uh, well, let's uh, refresh this. GitHub Actions. Uh, all right, so did I not publish the release? Um, Yeah, I did. Um, so the there should be release. There, there should be things here with uh, instead of saying main, it should say v one point seven point zero. But I don't know why it's not coming up. Uh, event release. Yeah, so we got it for 1.6, but we uh, don't know why it's not coming in. Uh, GitHub was having a few issues recently, so um, hopefully... Uh, do we have to... Am I going to have to trigger this manually? or it might just be waiting for these to finish. Uh, right, but soon enough, um, GitHub is gonna run the PyPI GitHub action, which is gonna post the new release to PyPI. So let me, uh, yeah, so I uploaded, double checked. So it's gonna upload the new release to PyPI. And once it does that, Conda Forge uh, also has a bot and it'll automatically detect the new release on PyPI 
and build a new Conda package. Um, and so uh, um, me and Santi will get notified of that. And once it's uh, once it's built, uh, once it's done that, we just click merge on a pull request and it, it produces a new Conda package. Uh, so that's why the, the Conda packages take a little longer to be available because the Conda Forge bot needs to realize that there has been a new release. Uh, so that takes about uh, sometimes about half a day or so. Um, right, so uh, yeah, let me just publish the Zenodo release here. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna publish. And yes, I understand that this can't be undone, uh, which is a very nerve wracking thing. All right, and now it's been published successfully. So Verde 1.7 uh, is available. Uh, the, the archive is available on Zenodo. There's a new DOI that's been published there. Uh, and all we, so this part is done. So publish the Zenodo archive. So all we have to do now is wait for Conda Forge. And once that's done, we close this issue. Um, but you know the rest now is all kind of automatic, so we don't really have to do anything. Uh, I just have to wait here and check that uh, GitHub Actions is going to run. And if it's not going to run, then uh, then I'm going to need to figure out why it doesn't run. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a a, a separate issue. Usually it just works. Uh, we've been doing this quite a while now and it, it kind of just works. All right. Yeah. So that's how we release uh, a package. Uh, it's uh, a bit involved and a bit manual, but we're, uh, we're pretty happy with the, with the process, but uh, yeah, of course it could always be made a little bit more streamlined.